Meet the Pickersgill's reed frog. They're absolutely tiny, less than three centimeters in length. And they live in these isolated wetlands in KwaZulu-Natal, in between development, between roads and airports. They're on the endangered list, but thanks to the only captive breeding program of its kind in Africa, these little frogs may soon be leaping into a new future. Hier die Teel program is een spanpoging waarin de Johannesburgse dierentuin is in Velo KZ en Natuurlewe. Die trust voor bedreigde natuurlewe en ander vernoote met mekaar saamwerk. Dis dier is in Velo KZ en Natuurlewe se Dr. Adrian Armstrong op die been gebring. Na sy studie oor reptiele en amfibie wat net in KZN voorkom, het Dr. Armstrong gevind dat die Pickersgillse rietpara op daardie stadium kritiek bedreig was. Hy het die dierentuin genader om die paras aan te teel en ook om een verzekeringsbevolking te skep ingeval die specie in die natuur zou uitsterf. In 2017 is 20 manniekie en 20 wijfie pikkersgeelse rietparas uit die natuur in KZ en geneem en juist vir hierdie doel na die dierentuin gebring. Hulle het het recht gekry om meer as 200 afstammelinge te teel. Een duplessie van die dierentuin en sy span krij die paraikies gereed vir hulle lang reis van Johannesburg af, terug na hulle oorspronkelijke thuiste in KZN, waar hulle weer in die natuur vrygelaat gaan word. Wat is special about the Pickers Gills? The Pickers Gills riet paraikie is een bedreigde species en is ook in demies tot Zuid-Afrika, so ons, dit is ons verantwoordelijkheid om seker te maak dat ons kyk ook na ons in demiese groep wat net die voort moet Zuid-Afrika. Nou hierdie paraikie is ook een baie goeie rol wat hulle speel. Hy is nie net natuurlijk indicator species om te wees as iets fout is in die natuur en die omgeving nie, maar hulle help ons ook met die beheer van seker insekte wat op die landbouw afdeling seker ekonomiese probleme kan veroorzaak, maar ook malaria, want hulle eet ook miskiete wat natuurlijk een malaria draar kan wees en natuurlijk die menselijke so obviously biosecurity very important here in the frog quarantine area. Not only that, but we're here in Johannesburg, which is high altitude. It's very cool, it's very dry. And yet these frogs are from KwaZulu Natal. And so the environment that they live in here has to be kept with high humidity and high temperature. Not only that. But all of the enclosures have to be sprayed twice a day. So it's very, very high maintenance. It's a lot of work for a little frog. Baie mense wonder, hoekom is die teling in a area buiten in die habitat, soos my voorraad in dierentuine, so belangrik? Nou, mense moet ook onthou dat in die natuur is daar redes en impacte wat negatief is, wat natuurlijk die populatie beinvloed, wat kan maak dat die dieren stress en hoeveel het is sa. En hier binnen in die dierentuin kan ons baie meer specifiek teel om nie seker te maak dat die populatie en die genetika en die natuur is so steeds gezond en daar is natuurlijk een vooruitgang vir die parrekies. So biosecurity is obviously a big issue here in this project from stepping through disinfectant when we come in from the outside and the frogs never being handled with human skin, always with gloves. And that goes all the way through to the water that is used for the frogs as well. Talk us a little bit uh, through what we're going to be doing here. So today we're going to be doing a chlorine test um, on the water. It's called reverse osmosis water. Water is one of the most important factors that we have to control because if our water isn't right, it's very easy to lose frogs and tadpoles. So these frogs are kept in a freshwater environment, so we've got to make the water exactly the same as it is in the wild. Natuurlijk is die rechte pada voeding ook van die uiterste belang. Frogs are carnivores, so a lot of what we feed them would be insects. We've got crickets, we've got fruit flies, we've got mealworms, and we've got crickets. Lots and lots of crickets. Now, the gut loading is what's very, very important because a cricket by itself is not a very good food source, so it's very important to get them to eat proper food and then get fed to the frogs. So obviously it's not just about breeding. Uh, you're doing a lot of research here on the, this captive population. What have you found out? Dier die proces wat ons die parakies natuurlijk gehuisvest het hier, so het ons baie geleer. Ons het verskrikkelijk baie gesien hoe die verandering van hulle ontwikkelingsfase, waar al 7 nou bekend staan wat ons uitgevind het, nie net 4, soos mense gewoonlik denk, daar is in parakies nie. Ten spuite van al die fysische sorg, is daar nog een ander groot bedreiging wat hulle in die gezicht staar. En wereldwijd word paddabevolkings hierdier uitgewis. Een swam bekend as ketterend. Elke padda moet afzonderlijk vertekens van ketterend getoets word voordat hy vrygelaat kan word. 
Het is baie belangrijk als jij dieren hervestig om te kijken naar die ziekte toestand van die dier. Laat, die, laat je niet nieuwe ziektes in die omgeving inbrengen nie. En ook laat dat dier niet um, jy weet, nadelig beïnvloed wordt als hij wel um, vrijgelaat wordt nie. Ons weet dat kitrit um, oorspronkelijk van Afrika afkom en ook van Oost-Amerika. En dat hierdie paras wordt niet geaffecteerd daardoor nie, maar ons moet zeker maken dat ons niet hierdie ziekte weer terug zit in die natuur nie. En dit is ook om onze baie specifieke toets ontwikkel het, om zeker te maken dat daai kitrit, laat ons dit niet verspreiden. nie. Bijna een jaar sedert die dag waar die oorspronkelijke paras naar die dierentuin gebring is, keer hulle en hulle 200 afstammelingen terug huis toe. It's all hands on deck here. There are six people helping with the loading. Three of them are going to travel down to Brazil and Natal. And uh, once this process has started, it really needs to go as smoothly and quickly as possible for the benefit of this precious cargo. It's just gone midnight and 200 frogs are packed safely in the back of the bucky, ready to be taken back home to KwaZulu-Natal. They will stop two to three times during the course of the journey to check CO2 levels, make sure the frogs are nice and relaxed. Good luck guys! This was a long night for the Pickers Gills Rietparaspan. But they were in Mount Moland, north of Durban, right along the Kinshaka Lughaven, where the frogs will be free. The rest of their friends in this project has been prepared to help them in the future. And the geest is high. You cannot do it yourself. One organization cannot do it. And we are all working together. I just feel fantastic. It's wonderful. We like to believe, and today is hopefully a recognition of that, that it's the little things that are going to save the planet. Die paddas gaan teen donker vrygelaat word, omdat hulle in die nacht actief is. En hier geniet hulle precies die selfde soort zorg as wat hulle in die laboratorium ontvang het. As we are... Here in Mount Morland now, we have taken the frogs out. We're all in the nets now for climatization. And we're very happy and proud to say we have not lost a single frog. All of them are alive and doing well. The Paras Freilating is a great affair. Complete with their own press conference, which is also the regierungsambtenaren by gewoon word. Why has government decided to get so involved in the conservation of such a small little species like this? This emanated largely from uh, the listing of this species uh, through the IUCN as critically endangered. And therefore, following that, uh, we had to compile a biodiversity management plan and also basically appoint uh, an agency that oversees the implementation of the biodiversity management plan as well as monitor it over time. But the biggest goal now is for us to move to the next phase, which is uh, making it a species of least concern. This is clearly a proud day and uh, things seem to be going very, very well. What is the atmosphere like in the department? This is a fantastic uh, feeling indeed because first we are witnessing the implementation of a biodiversity management plan. Mm -hmm. We're seeing it live in action. And secondly, this is actually showcasing to the world as part of celebrating 25 years of uh, biodiversity conservation globally. That Yes, we are very much involved, and these are some of the actions that we are seeing, uh, witnessing, uh, practically underway. One of the issues with the Pickers Gills reed frog is that it is found in these tiny little wetlands all the way down the KwaZulu Natal coast. And because it's so tiny, it's not able to get from one wetland to the other very easily. So there must be a danger that each of those populations are becoming quite genetically isolated. Well, we have with us Professor Antoinette Kotzer from the National Zoological Gardens. She's done a lot of the genetic work on this project. Ons het absoluut niks geweet van die genetieke van hierdie klein paraikies nie. En toe het ons so um, vijf jaar gelede besluit uh, wat ons een bijdrage kan lever tot bewaring, kan ons kyk na hierdie 21 lokaliteite waar hulle voorkom. Is hulle ingeteel in hierdie verskillende lokaliteite? Is daar uh, geen vloei tussen die verskillende lokaliteite? So ons het besluit om ons eie merkers te, te vervaardig en dit is natuurlijk de eerste in die wereld, want daar, die pikkers kom net hier voor in Zuid-Afrika, ook net in die strook langs die kustlijn. En toe het ons gesien, maar ene, daar is nie verskil nie, daar is nie rarig inteling nie, die genetische variatie is 
nogal voldoende en het is volhoudbaar. Dr. Jean Terrent van de EWT bestudeert hier die paras al voor baie jaren in die natuur. Ultimately, we'd like to see this being proclaimed as a, a formal protected area. It's part of Mount Moreland Conservancy, but we'd like to have that ramped up to a higher level of protection. Uh, and then our job will also be to now try and monitor the frogs that we've released today. Elke para is met klein fluorescerende siliconen gebaseerde merkers of elastomeren en gespuit, wat in die nacht onder een speciale lucht gezien kan worden. Dit helpt die navorsers om die paras wat deel van die project is te kan identificeren. So we are looking at two millimeter little um, injected dye elastomers into a two centimeter frog into an 18 hectare wetland. So we'll report back on how that goes. Met zon onder het die oomblik waarop allemaal gewag het uiteindelijk aangebreek. Wow, you're never going to see so many pickers girls read frogs all together again. That's true, eh? Oh, fantastic numbers, brilliant that we're releasing them. Oh, what are going to do is, you have to physically remove them. You're going to physically remove them. And spread them out. Well, we're finally here. It's a, a windy uh, but otherwise uh, warmish night here in KwaZulu-Natal in the wetlands around the Mount Moorland area. And here we are, these frogs which have had this amazing journey. Ian, how do you feel? All of us can actually just say we're extremely happy. We are speechless at the moment. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal event to see these guys going back into the natural habitat and can live their life in an exit environment. Excellent. Well, let's get them free. Please, come and help me. Sure. And he's away. That was one of the most special conservation moments I think I've ever been a part of. That was really, really wonderful. Here at Mount Moorland, we are surrounded by the sound of frogs. Just, just listen. Probably five or six species at least that we can hear now. And in amongst them, the little chirrup of the Pickersgill's reed frog. It's been an amazing day for conservation science to experience the release of these frogs back out into their natural habitat. But mostly it's been inspiring to see how the dedication and the knowledge of a few very, very professional scientists can make such a difference to the future of one little frog.